this is Rebecca Smith with Help for Homeschool. Sometimes the hardest part of homeschooling isn't educating your kids, but managing the craziness and chaos that comes from having babies and toddlers in the house. Some babies and toddlers are easier than others, but nearly all of them require constant attention. So how can you give attention to your little ones while also giving your older kids a high quality education? How can you meet everybody's needs and also save your sanity? I don't know if it's 100% possible, but I am going to give you some practical tips to help you manage the wonderful chaos that comes from having babies and toddlers and also educating your older kids. Tip number one, homeschool during nap time. Now, if you are blessed enough to have a baby or a toddler that still naps, this can be prime homeschool time in your household. This is something that we have done a lot. Maybe your big kids can do some independent work in the morning and then you can take that time after lunch to do some hands-on work with them yeah. while your little <laughs> ones nap. Or maybe you have a baby that naps twice a day and you can just schedule things during that time. It really is a great time to have dedicated to your big kids. You are so noisy. You're so noisy. No one says that school has to happen at 9 a.m. every day of the week. Maybe for your family, having an after lunch homeschool time just works best with your little ones in the house. And that is totally fine. This is all about you finding what works best for your family. So I am giving you permission to homeschool during nap time if that works best for you. Tip number two, have your older kids take turns playing with your younger kids. Now this works especially well if you have multiple big kids playing with older young kids. We do this a lot. One of my big kids will take a break and play with the toddler or the baby in a very safe space. And they'll take a 15, 20 minute break while I work with a sibling and then they will switch. This is kind of a win, win, win because your big kids get to go play with your toddler preschooler who is desperate for, my, for a playmate. So your toddler preschooler is happy. Your big kid is happy because they have gotten a break. You are happy because you've had a few minutes of uninterrupted time. Then your big kids can switch. This is a really nice way to have that quiet time. <laughs> Um, and it usually is very nice if your kids can avoid fighting <laughs> with each other during that time. Ah! Whew, okay, she, she didn't want me anymore. All right, tip number three, invest in some fun, entertaining and educational toys. Now, you know what these are. It's things like Play-Doh or pattern blocks or even a geo board with rubber bands, magnetic blocks things that kids enjoy doing, that keeps their hands busy, that keeps them quiet and entertained. These are awesome for preschoolers and older toddlers. <laughs> Other ideas might be stamps or markers, maybe a chalk or dry erase board, anything like that. In the comments, I'm gonna post some affiliate links for some of our favorite entertaining toys for toddlers and preschoolers. Another great idea with these toys is to rotate them. Don't keep the same toys out all the time. Pull one toy out on a Monday, put that one back up, pull a different one out on Tuesday. That way all of the toys stay fresh and they don't get bored with any one thing. All right, tip number four, short TV times. Now, I am not above turning on a TV show to keep a toddler entertained for a few minutes. PBS has some great kids shows. My kids love them. If you need to turn on the TV for 30 minutes because you are about to lose your patience and you just need some quiet for a few minutes, I'm here to tell you it is okay by me if that happens. And to be totally honest with you, the Leapfrog Letter Factory DVD taught every single one of my kids their letter sounds, except for the, the baby who hasn't learned to talk yet, much less read. <laughs> I'm gonna post an affiliate link to that down in the comments as well. Seriously, that Letter Factory DVD is one of my very favorite things. But it is totally okay 
to let your kid watch a show for 30 minutes while you work with the big ones. If it saves your sanity and it helps you to focus in with those kids for just a few minutes, then it's well worth it in my opinion. Tip number five, change locations. Now this tip will only work with certain ages. Generally babies and toddlers between age one and two can be pretty hard to watch outside. They're a little unpredictable. They're eating random things. Hello, are you coming up? Up. Ah. But Maybe you have a baby that will enjoy being out in a stroller for a while, or you can put them in a toddler swing in your backyard. The big kids can jump on the trampoline. Changing locations can buy you some entertained kids um, to have some quiet time one-on-one -on -one with one of your other kids. A nice fenced in space is always perfect for this. But like I said, this doesn't work for every age range. And this doesn't work for every kid. I have one in particular that gets super distracted if we move outside and I just can't do anything with him if we are not in a quiet inside space. <laughs> Whew, okay, Daisy went and took a nap. <laughs> she was getting a little crazy. Can you hear that? That's Daisy hitting the wall. Tip number six, utilize feeding times. I have some wonderful memories of doing read aloud work with my big kids while nursing a newborn. The baby is quiet. You have 10 or 15 minutes on the couch where your other kids are snuggled up. They wanna get close to the baby. They wanna get close to you and you are able to read to them during that time. As your little ones get older, maybe a snack time is a good time to get some work in because the baby or toddler is distracted or even with your big kids reading aloud to them during lunch. It's a little hard for kids to talk with food in their mouths. My kids still can do it, but sometimes it's just a great quality time to talk to your kids, to read to your kids, to have discussions about things while the babies and toddlers are a little distracted with eating. I've definitely bribed my preschoolers to sit still for a few minutes with a popsicle or a cookie at times as well. All right, my last tip, tip number seven, embrace the chaos. As long as you have littles in the house, it is going to be a little chaotic. There's gonna be some noise, there's gonna be messes, there's going to be kids needing you at inopportune times. It's just gonna happen and you should just expect it. Honestly, it stresses me out sometimes and sometimes I feel overwhelmed by the amount of noise and chaos going on around me and I know that you might as well and that's okay, but go ahead and expect that a bit of this is going to happen. It's okay, it's normal. It does not mean that you're not cut out for homeschooling or that you are a bad homeschool parent. It's just kind of part of the family dynamic of homeschooling. Do you have a tip for homeschooling with littles in the house that I did not cover? Please comment below and tell me what your tip is. Maybe it's something I haven't tried that would just revolutionize our homeschooling. I would love to hear it. Please make sure to like and subscribe so that you get all of our new content as it's posted. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Can you hear that? That's Daisy.